Welcome to Rock of Faith. You're about to watch the service of March 23rd, Wednesday in the year Pastor U.S. Tentville. You can submit prayer requests, offerings, and find everything at our website, roffont.com. The link is in the video description below. Praise the Lord. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. It's good to see each one here tonight. We say God bless you. If you're glad to be here, say amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to open in prayer. Um, had a chance to talk to Sister Ruby today, and she's doing real well. Uh, she's yeah. got a lot more uh, physical therapy to do, and uh, when she gets stronger, it's on her right side. She had the hip replaced on the right side, so she has to be strong enough to be able to drive, use the brake and the accelerator and that sort of thing. But she's uh, going to out to Fontana and doing the physical therapy, so she said doing pretty good. And um, I don't know, she said, I don't have an exact date when I can come back, but when I'm strong enough that she'll be here. Uh, we need member Sharon, uh, Sharon's going in for surgery on the 6th. And Kenny's doing better, I understand. Doing really good, so let's remember Kenny. And my son is uh, doing fine, doing better. And uh, he's already back to work and understanding, amen. My understanding is he's going to need to travel next month, and so uh, he's, they're getting him ready for that. He's, and he's been to the doctor so he can travel. He just can't lift things over his head. He's got to, uh, whatever, um, put the uh, baggage in the, in the, uh, have to ticket it or whatever they do with it. No carry on. I can't lift it or put it over his head. So. They've got to, they've got to, he's got to leave it, uh, ticket it or whatever they do. And then, then he can uh, roll it around, do whatever, all that stuff. So he doesn't need a lot when he travels because he's, uh, he works inside doing the computer. So it's not like he has a lot of stuff. So anyway, we need to, to pray for him there. He's going to get that. And uh, I got a chance to share um, for, for Matthew. Uh, Matthew got a 40 hour a week job with benefits at Casa Colima and he was supposed to start today and he started yesterday. They needed him early so he's working. This is his second day today and I thank the Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. He prayed so hard. Uh, he got a million jobs part time. He, they'll hire him part time in a, in a second but the full-time and, and benefits was hard to come by, so he's got that. Uh, my son's birthday, James, is actually uh, on this Friday. We celebrated it last Saturday because he's going to be gone. He's, his wife is, and he are flying up to San Francisco for the weekend, so he's going to celebrate his birthday. I had fun with him on his birthday. I told him I haven't been 40 for 25 years. Same <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> it's a long, that was a long time ago, amen. That was a long time ago, amen. Um, I'm trying to think anybody else. Let's remember Juanice and Debbie tonight. Um, uh, uh, Brianda has been fighting this flu, so let's remember them. And let's pray for our service on this Sunday for, for Easter. Uh, we would like uh, the Lord to touch people, let them be here. It's our chance to minister to them. So let's pray for all those that, that family and friends. There's, we all know people that could be here that are not. So let's pray for them, invite them out to the service on Sunday. Amen. Uh, Pastor Dan is coming pretty soon too, but he is leaving this week to go to Nebraska. Um, he's going to be there for next week. I don't know if he'll be there for Easter or not. I just know he's going to be there for a week. So let's, uh, let's lift him up. Amen. I know it's hard for him to travel. And it's physically difficult. And let's, uh, amen, pray for that. And also I, pray, I sent off the information for Robert for licensing for Foursquare on Monday. So let's pray that the Lord will work out amen. all that sort of thing as well. Anyone else tonight? Yes, we'll go into prayer. Anybody with a request? Margo? Okay. 
All right, let's remember Lori tonight. Sister Mary Lee. All right, Leon. And then Richard, uh, uh, rest on my cassette, you know, he's been hospice, yes, and he felt real bad right now. Uh, something really wrong about it, and he's usually trying to hide from me, hard to hide. Pray for him not to feel so bad, be healed, and uh, pray for Bree Sandler and the Sandals in their situations. Okay, yeah, amen. Let's remember those tonight. Remember, Sister Nobit, she went to get her to Okay, let's remember Mildred tonight. Let's remember Sam and Nadia tonight as well. I know they need prayer. Let's remember them as well. Praise the Lord. Amen. Anyone else tonight? All right, if you would, why don't you stand with me? We're going to take these requests to the Lord in prayer. And if you would, turn to your neighbor and tell him, I love you and you can't do nothing about it. Tell him, I love you and you can't do nothing about it. Amen. And if you would, repeat after me and say, this is the best day and the best year that I've ever had because Jesus is with me. One more time. This is the best day and the best year that I've ever had because Jesus is with me. Let's give him a clap offering tonight. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's join together. Let's lift up each one of these requests tonight. And let's allow God's Holy Spirit to have his way in this place tonight. And also for those who are not here, that God would touch those in a special way. Amen. <laughs> Father, we thank you tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, and Lord, we lift up everyone that's sick in body tonight. God, we lift up our sister Sharon tonight. In the name of Jesus, we pray for healing in her body. We thank you that our sister Ruby is better, but Lord, we pray for her as well. Lord, touch that hip. Lord, let it mend, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We pray for Kenny Peters tonight. Father God, let his body mend, and we pray for healing. Lord, for Debbie and Juanice, Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus, healing for their physical bodies. Pray for my son Sam, Father, in the name of Jesus, for healing in his body. Let him be completely healed. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for these at the rest home. For this man, Lord, we pray that you'll touch him in his body, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, healing and deliverance. Um, Lord, we lift up... Uh, Sam and Nadia tonight, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you'll open the right door. We pray for all these, Lord. Thank you for these that have gotten jobs from Monica and Matthew. Lord, bless them on their job. Lord, help them, Lord, in everything that they do. Lord, we give you the glory, the praise, and the honor. Lord, for every one of these that are fighting the flu, we pray that God should touch them by your mighty power. Lord, we give you the glory, the praise, and the honor. Lift up each one tonight. Lord, every special request, Lord. Lori tonight, Father God, in the name of Jesus, uh, we pray that you'll touch by your mighty power, Lord. Thank you for the gifts of the Spirit and the power of God. Bless in our service tonight, Lord. Touch your people in a special way, Lord. We give you all the glory and the praise and the honor. Stir up the gifts of the Spirit and the power of God as we Yield to you tonight, Lord, and this week as we celebrate the week of Easter and your resurrection. Father God, may you bless our service on tonight. We'll give you the glory and the praise and the honor. Thank you, Lord. Bless the spoken word, Lord. Everything that we do tonight, let your spirit prevail. Lord, we remember also David Tarrant tonight, Lord. We ask you to touch him in his body. Lord, let him receive healing and strength, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, we give you glory. We give you praise and honor. And Lord, we ask all these things tonight in your name, the name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Let's give him a clap offering tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen.
You can be seated tonight. Amen. We're going to ask the guys up there, if you got a song for us, would you bless us with a song tonight? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Beautiful song. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're going to go ahead and receive the evening tithe and offering. This goes to the expense of our church. We'd like you to give us unto the Lord. We know the Lord will bless you. Anything that you can do to help us is certainly appreciated. Amen. Father, we thank you tonight in the mighty name of Jesus for this wonderful opportunity, Lord, to be in your house tonight and to worship you, Lord. So many places in the world do not have this freedom, and we thank you for it, Lord. Lord, we ask you to bless the gift and the giver, Lord, some way, somehow, may you return it to your people. Lord, we'll thank you for it. And once again, we look to you for our sufficiency, Lord. You are our provider, and we look to you tonight, and we ask it in your precious name, the name of Jesus, and everyone said, Amen. 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 If you could help us with those songs. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Beautiful song. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, I shared once before, about a week or so ago, that I heard a man talking about uh, gospel music. And he said, a lot of the music that sung is really inspirational, but it's not gospel. The gospel is the birth, the life, the death, the resurrection, and the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the gospel. And not everybody's singing the gospel. They sing a lot of stuff, but that's the gospel. Amen. And I enjoyed that. I, that blessed my soul. Amen. I like, the, uh, I like the fact that Jesus came here. Amen. Praise the Lord. We have uh, just a few announcements, but we want to make them this, this evening. Uh, Sunday is Easter, as you well know, and we appreciate if you will earnestly pray for our service. We want you to invite uh, friends and family. We all know people that could be here on Sunday, and so let's pray for them to be here uh, and they get to hear the gospel. Uh, many people, for whatever reasons, aren't attending regularly, and many of us know people that could be here, and so let's pray for them. Um, we are coming up already. March is quickly uh, disappearing on us. And uh, so let's remember, amen, uh, as we go into April, uh, of the events that are there, we're going to have, I think the ladies group is on the night. Is that correct? And Sister Teresa is going to be ministering, and they're going to have hot dogs, all beef hot dogs, on that day. I might show up and then sneak in there. Amen. I'm not supposed to have one, but I might have one. Amen. Let's remember our ladies as they have their group. And on the 10th, Pastor Dan is due to be with us Sunday morning and Sunday night, uh, April. And then on the 24th, uh, Sister Carol Dickey will be with us in the morning. And Robert Greenlaw will be with us in the evening on the 24th. So let's remember to pray for our services in April. Praise the Lord. Amen. I don't think I missed anything yet. We're going to have our picnic coming up in May. We have other events too. The, oh, the banquet. Oh, that's the other thing. That is actually on the 30th of April. And it's going to be at Mimi's Cafe. And um, Linda said to me this week, the tickets are 10 and 6. They got the, the kids down to $6. And uh, they will have, uh, she will tell me what the menu is. She's got it down, so they will have, she said it's a good menu, so they'll have stuff. Uh, anyway, uh, that's coming up on the 30th. And Carol Dickey will be speaking at the ladies group. And that's uh, on Mimi's Cafe on Mountain. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, mountain across the street from Carol's. Amen. Praise the Lord. Sun Mountain. It's it's right on Mountain. It's all it's before you get to Arrow Highway if you're going north. It's before you get to Arrow on the right hand side. Yeah. 
Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, guys, can you help us with our internet and how we're doing with the internet, please? Sure, we're doing good. These numbers are all from the 21st. We're at 8,672 views. We're only steady at 47 states and 87 countries. Our top countries right now are Jordan, Mexico, and Austria. Our top states are New Jersey, Missouri, and Washington. Um, kind of interesting, we found that from the past two and a half weeks now, um, in California, we have some watching us on a PlayStation system. They watched us several services in a row, and another person in California is watching us on a Wii gaming system. So I have no idea why it's actually on the Wii's incredibly hard, so they must really want to watch us at the moment. So we're, we're doing really good. Um, we're looking forward to um, a lot more. I, I'm processing services actually as we speak. Um, on our website, we're doing good as well. We have just shy of 5,000 unique visitors visiting us for the past two years, and they have generated over 5,600 page views. And um, for whatever reason, we have more countries going to our website than our uh, YouTube page, which we can't fully understand, because the only thing I can think of that they would want would be to go to YouTube or go to maybe our live services. They are you know, fluent enough in English, but there's most of what our website is for is if you're local enough to come here. So uh, they must they have something there that they want to look at, I guess. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. You know, over 8,000 views is really good for the website. I mean, for people watching our service, that's really good. And that's less than three years, right? Yes. It's about two and a half years that we've been on the, on the internet. So we are ministering to people out there. We praise the Lord. You know what we need to do, too? I forgot. Uh, Brussels. They had the bombing in Brussels. And why don't we just take time right now to pray for all those people that were, many were killed, but their families and those that need a touch tonight in Brussels. Father, we thank you tonight in the mighty name of Jesus for those in Brussels tonight. Lord, those that lost loved ones, Lord, the, the difficulties for their families, Lord, we pray, Lord, the blood of Jesus to be upon that country, Lord, and the mercy of God. We pray that the churches will respond and come out and help the people and be, Lord, compassionate to those, Lord, that need their help. Lord, we give you the glory, the praise, and the honor. Bless them in a special way, Lord, this night, Lord. And we ask it in your name, the name of Jesus, and everyone said, Amen. Amen. All right, guys, you have one more song? Be good. Amen. Man in the middle. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles with you tonight, would you turn with me, please, to Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11, and we're going to ask our sister Mary Lee, would you ask the blessing on the word? Lord, thank you again for the privilege to be in your house. Thank you for the word. And we uh, thank you for our life. We thank you for our Amen. Let's start in verse 45 uh, tonight. Luke 11, 45. Then one of the lawyers answered and said to him, Teacher, by saying these things, you reproach us also. And he said, Woe to you also, lawyers, for you load men with burdens hard to bear, and you yourselves do not touch the burdens with one of your fingers. Woe to you, for you build the tombs of the prophets, and your fathers kill them. In fact, you bear witness that you approve of the deeds of your fathers, for they indeed kill them, and you build their tombs. Therefore, the wisdom of God also said, I will send them prophets and apostles, and some of them they will kill, and persecute that the blood of all the prophets which was shed from the foundation of the world may be required of this generation 
from the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah, who perished between the altar and the temple. Yes, I say to you, it shall be required of this generation. Woe to you, lawyers, for you have taken away the key of knowledge. You did not enter in yourselves, and those who were entering in, you hindered. Um, I want to take uh, a little bit of time this evening. I've been trying to spend this week with the, with the inf influence and inference of how important this week really was. Um, when Jesus entered into the week, we talked about it on Palm Sunday, how that Jesus was entering into Jerusalem. He only had seven days basically left. Uh, actually, Sunday to Sunday would make eight. But he literally was coming into the last week of his life. And he wanted the disciples to follow his instructions. He spent about three years, somewhere between three and three and a half years, instructing the apostles on what he wanted them to do once he left, uh, we shared a little bit about the disciples on the road to Emmaus, how that they all hid themselves after Jesus died, and uh, they did not start the ministry as Jesus wanted them to. And as Jesus walked with these two disciples, he stirred them up, and they came back and stirred up the apostles. Amen. I want to I want to spend some time tonight to to help set the stage of how important this week was both to Jesus and the entire world there whether people want to understand it or believe it or not doesn't make me any difference tonight but there were no prophets other than the prophets that were sent to Israel there were no other believers prophets, men of God that lived in other countries. They may be people that, that worship the Lord or the three wise men, stuff like that. But the prophets themselves were sent to Israel. Jesus said that it was impossible for a prophet to perish out of Jerusalem. And so the ones that were sent, which I read to you, they were either killed or persecuted. And it was very, it's very significant, the things that are done in the Middle East. When God began to speak to mankind, he started, amen, in the book of Genesis. But Abraham became the father of faith. Abraham was the one that headed for Israel. Abraham was the one that lived by faith. Abraham was the one that followed God's instruction. And so as far as we're concerned, he is the father of faith, and he was led by God to go to the borders of Israel. If you don't know the story, the Bible says, Jesus said, the father said to him, every place that your foot treads upon shall be yours from this particular place to the end, and it was talking about the boundaries of Israel. And what I want to share tonight is really important. Because this, this week is the week where Jesus is going to uh, come into Jerusalem and he's going to uh, initiate, which I shared before, for the church ordinances. Even though they were following the Passover, they literally, there's nothing in the New Testament that tells us that they were uh, following the Passover. But instead, we have the ordinance of communion and foot washing. We have the ordinance that Jesus is going to give the disciples the command to go out into all the world and preach the gospel. We have these instructions where Jesus is going to start the New Testament church, and he's going to start it in Jerusalem. Now, we know that, of course, he told them to go into all the world, but up until this point, there was no other prophets, there were no other men of God other than the men that were sent to Jerusalem or Israel 
that they would prophesy and minister to the people, amen, uh, the instructions that God gave them. Some of these men were shepherds. Some of them came from other avenues of life. But they came and God told them to go prophesy at Jerusalem. God's intent, he had to start with somebody. Excuse me. He had to start somewhere. So he started with the people, amen, that were Jewish. And they were the ones that began to believe in God and to serve the Lord. And now, of course, the gospel is, 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 is around the world. But the significant part, it, this week was the week that God was going to establish a relationship with mankind, not just the Jewish people. And so he was going to sacrifice himself, not just for the Jewish people, but for everybody in the entire world. This, these, this week was the most magnificent week that the entire world has ever known. The three days that Jesus spent suffering for mankind were the three most important days of mankind upon the earth. Without Jesus doing what he did in those three days, then there would be no church, there would be no salvation, there would be no forgiveness of sin, There'd be no healing. There'd be no gifts of the Spirit. There would be nothing that we have spiritually that would be paid for. None of that would exist without Jesus doing what he did. It also, amen, includes the whole earth, and so none of us would be here tonight if it wasn't for Jesus doing what he did in those three days. He had to deal with people. And uh, when he was here ministering, the people that he had the most troubles with is the scribes and Pharisees. And in this passage that I'm dealing with you with tonight, he had to speak to the lawyers. And the lawyers were, were men that literally would study the word of God and that they had... Um, um, supposedly had the interpretation of God's word. And so if you had a question or if you had something to debate, you would go to the lawyer, just like today for the law, you have to go to, to a lawyer so he can interpret the law for you. And often in the courthouse, when you go to a trial, of course the judge is the final say on the law, but the lawyers plead the cause for each side, and they interpret the law to the best of their ability, and then the judge has to make the final decision, amen. But as I was uh, praying this week and thinking about how important this week really is in history when we go back 2,000 years, that this is the, it, it, is, it should be in every Christian's life, the most important week that we celebrate. Now, I know that we're Christians 24 hours a day, seven days a week, but there had to be a day that was initiated, amen, by Christ to start the church. And so these three days, amen, were significant, amen, in the fact that they brought salvation, healing, and deliverance to the world. They didn't just, it wasn't just three days where Jesus suffered. It wasn't just three days that were, were religious days. They were three days in which the Son of God accomplished the purpose of God that he was sent to accomplish in this earth. Very, we don't, we don't have sacred. We don't have holy, so to speak. We do, but people don't respect it as such. Mostly to everybody, Sunday is Sunday, but it's not a holy day. It's not a day of sacredness. It's not a day where men put aside their work. Um, I understand it to a certain extent in our world today. Uh, people have to work often on Sunday. 
and I understand that. But in the day that the Bible was written, and in, in the feast days, and on the Sabbath day, people were not supposed to do any servile work, and that is work that you do that's regular, whatever you want, whatever your vocation is. You weren't allowed to do it. I read to you a little bit about the Feast of the Tabernacles, and in that feast, in those seven days, that if you did any servile work, they killed you. It's awful quiet in here. That's a pretty severe penalty for working on a holy day. Hello. And so the day was significant. Uh, we, don't, we don't appreciate this, the day, and this is what I'm getting at. The day was holy. The three days that Jesus suffered were sacred, holy days. There are no other days on the earth like it. You can't compare those days with any other day of the week, month, or year, no matter what event has taken place. Those three days are, are, are beyond anything that we could ever comprehend of how important they were for our salvation. Without those days in our calendar, without the events that took place in those days, we are all lost. None of us have any hope. None of us can enter into the presence of God. None of us have forgiveness of sin. We could never be healed, delivered, or set free. And so we would be completely lost and eternally separated from God if it wasn't for these three special days that Jesus gave his life. Amen. I got to thinking about this because we, we, don't, we don't do this much anymore. Um, years and years ago, people worked Monday through Friday and some Saturday. But most businesses were closed on Sunday. Anybody in this building ever lived that long to know when that took place? Did you ever? Amen. I remember when I was a little boy, uh, there were businesses, all of them were closed on Sunday. And if you needed something, it was just too bad. You had to wait till Monday till they opened up again. Hello. And often, I mean, on Saturday, they closed early, five or six o'clock. And if you didn't do your business by that time, then that's too bad. You're going to wait till Monday. And so it was Sunday was considered a special day. Even if they weren't really Christians, it was set apart in the week for men to rest. Jesus, amen, spoke, or the word spoke in the Old Testament, that the Sabbath was a day of rest. It was a holy day. It was a day for spiritual renewal. Amen. I'm preaching to me tonight. How important is it for people to come to church? How important is it for people to to learn scripture and doctrine and instruction. How important is it for people to worship the Lord and to give Him glory, to get spiritually renewed at least once a week, amen, so that their soul and their spirit can be ready when Jesus comes. The church was established so that we would help one another, amen, in spiritual uh, activities, amen, that we might be able to help those that have weaknesses and difficulties and sin and whatever it is that hinders them, that we might help them overcome in their life so that when they do die, they're going to be ready to go meet the Savior. If you're not ready to go meet the Savior, then when you die, whatever spiritual condition you're in at the point of death, that's where you're going to be forever. Someone said there's a place called purgatory. It isn't in the Bible. You can't buy them out of purgatory because there's no purgatory. Heaven or hell. And where, when you die, that's exactly the, the situation that we face. That's why these three days are so significant. Jesus paid the price for every man's salvation so that if they would accept him as Savior and Lord, that they could be spared the eternal separation that was going to come in the last days. Amen. If you would like to look it up in Revelation, it calls this eternal separation the second death. 
That means that after you die, amen, physically, amen, there is a spiritual death that you, you must face or could face if you're disobedient. And if you're disobedient, there is no way to get you back. There's no way to get you restored. There's no way to help you, even though people want to say there is. There's absolutely no salvation or deliverance unless you get it today. That's what makes today so wonderful. Today, you can lift your hands and say, God, please forgive me. God, help me. God, heal me. God, deliver me. God, set me free. You can get deliverance, amen, today. But if you wait too long and you die, you can't get delivered. And so you need to follow this covenant that Jesus made with the earth, amen. And these men here that were supposed to be interpreters of the law did not understand it at all. They did not give the help and instructions that was needed to the people. And so here it said, they didn't enter in and they messed up the people that tried to enter in. Um, not, uh, I better read that again. I'll just, I'll just say it this way. Often I hear people say things that are not only contrary to the word of God, but also they will keep you out of heaven. Uh, there's one thing about saying something that's, that's just a mistake. Somebody made a mistake. It's whatever. But when you're behind this desk, you have to tell people the truth. And when you tell someone that they're okay when they're not, then there's going to be a judgment that's going to come. And this person up here is going to be responsible for what he said to the people out there. And I have heard people preach messages that are totally not only not scriptural, they will actually lead a person into hell if they listen to it and follow it. Very famous people have said things, amen, that do not lead people to heaven, but they would lead them to hell. We are here tonight to help people get their problems solved, get their heart right with God, bless them in some way, so no matter what it is they've done that's contrary to the Word of God, that they can be restored. We're also here tonight to build people up, uh, to build your faith, to build your courage, to build your joy. Some of you need to notify your face. Amen to build things that you have a lack of. And we're not here to condemn anybody. We're here to help you. We're here to lift you up. We're here to encourage you because there's coming a day there's going to have a final judgment. And if we go past that day, there is nothing we can do to help you. And when you go to give account of your life to God, and you bow your knee before the Lord, and you have not made things right with God, there is no way we can get you restored. But if you get restored tonight, thank God, if you get forgiven, amen, you can enter into the kingdom of heaven and live with Jesus forever and forever. Now let me share uh, just, just a few more things. I hope I'm helping you. I'm blessing me tonight. Amen. When Jesus was in the garden, he told the disciples, please watch and pray with me just one hour. Just, just one hour. And so he went and prayed for an hour, and he came back, and they're all asleep. And he earnestly prayed. He had much uh, opposition. The weight of the world was upon him. The Bible says that he sweat great drops of blood. So while he prayed, he went back a second hour and he prayed and the disciples fell asleep again. So he had no help there for another hour. It was just he and the Father. And he began to open up more to God and said, I'm willing to go. He came back and the disciples were asleep again and he went back for a third hour of prayer, at least we know of, at least three hours. It could have been more that he prayed and he was willing to go. 
And when the soldiers came to get Jesus, all of the disciples fled, and John included. I always have somebody tell me John was the big disciple. He was the best, whatever. He ran just as fast as Peter and all the other disciples out of the garden. Hello. He did not. He did not do what he was supposed to. And when when the Lord returned uh, or appeared to the disciples after his passion, after he died, he told the disciples to go get everybody, and he used the word and Peter. So he included Peter because Peter had denied him three times, amen, before he was crucified. And so Jesus said, go get Peter. Make sure you bring him here too. So God was going to bring restoration to Peter, even though he was a little ornery. Hello. Even though he denied him three times, and according to the Bible, he used profanity. He cursed and swore that he never knew the Lord. We find ourselves, and we try to address these issues, our human nature, if we can just put it this way, stinks. Our human nature is terrible. We need to have God's nature. We need to have the Holy Spirit guide us and lead us, or we're terrible people. I, if, if I told, if I ever write a book, it'll be a bestseller. If I told the world what I know about people and what they've done, I know some people wouldn't believe it, but I know a lot of things for a fact of what people have done. They have been terrible, terrible things that people have done. People have visited me in my office privately and told me what they did and wanted forgiveness. And and just to be honest, I was amazed, not at everyone, But at some people, I would have never believed they did those things. And yet they did them because your human nature is terrible. And if you go to church, it's one thing. But if you stop going and you stop praying and you stop reading and you stop worshiping, I'm telling you right now, you will go back and do the things you used to do because that is the only thing that's keeping you from doing them tonight. Is the Holy Spirit's power in you through prayer, through Bible study and worship. That's what makes what we do so significant. Amen. When we try to encourage people to worship the Lord, if you're up here looking this way, amen, I see people, they don't want to worship the Lord because we're not singing their favorite song. And if you don't know, the Lord inhabits the praise of his people. So you ought to sing that song anyway because you get the presence of God. If you don't like the song too bad, sing it anyway. Hello? In fact, you ought to sing it when you get home. Make sure you do. Amen. That brings his presence. The word of God built your faith. Without hearing the word now, you don't even have to read it. You can put it on and it reads it to you. Amen. It brings you to a place of spiritual encouragement and being built up to where you are now living in line with the Word of God. And without that, there is no hope for you. I have done funerals where I have gone into the place and there's people there. They're not always Christians. And there's people in the, in the house that believed that was it for the person. And if you want to see something that's sad and depressing, is see a person that thinks that their loved one is gone forever. If you want to see somebody sad, I've seen them almost turn the casket over. I've seen them cry and lament like you've never seen anybody lament because they believe that's it for their loved one. Amen. It's such a shame not to know the truth about the matter that this is just the house we live in. This is just the house. When we die, our spirit leaves our body, and if we're right with God, we go into the presence of God. 
I wish I could get a witness and we get to live with him forever. But there's many people that, that do not understand that. I wish I had a nickel for every Christian that told me, I don't want to go to the funeral. I want to remember the person like they were. Well, I wish I had a nickel for every person, amen, that said things like that. And I'd like to tell them that that's not the person. That's the house they lived in. The real person is gone. Hello. They used to have expression in the Old Testament that they gave up the ghosts. Come on, Sarah gave up the ghost. Abraham gave up the ghost. David gave up the ghost. Everybody gave up the ghost. Today, we don't hear things like that. We hear someone died. No, they gave up the ghost. The body stayed here and the spirit took off. You may not know it, but Harvard actually did tests on people that were dying. And they actually have documented proof that you have a spirit and when you die, it leaves your body. They have documented proof of it because they did plenty of research on it. Amen. They don't write it down and tell people that because they, they don't want to advertise it. But it's true. Amen. It's true. And so as I, as I read these things and as I study them, these people that were doctors and lawyers and scribes and Pharisees knew nothing about Jesus Christ. They didn't know about his love. They didn't know about spirit, soul, and body. I don't understand that because the word Elohim is plural for God. It's listed several hundred times in the Old Testament. They said our God is one. Elohim is plural. If you don't understand it, Jewish people knew that. Elohim is plural. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. If it didn't say that, amen, I don't understand how they could miss it, amen. But yet they didn't believe in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And Jesus, when he came to the earth, began to minister Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I'm the Son, I have a Father, and there's a Holy Spirit. And the, and the, and the doctors and the lawyers and the scribes and the Pharisees were absolutely lost at Jesus' doctrine and they're the ones that were most supposed to be the most prolific in God's word. And they were missing it by hand over fist. It's hard for me now, uh, after all these years of studying God's word, to listen to stuff that's on television that doesn't line up with this. It's a waste of time. People, very famous people, say things that are terrible. And if you've never read the Bible and you've never studied it, you might think that what they said is true. And if you want to follow it, the Bible says you can believe a lie and be damned. And that is not a good place to be because if someone lies to you and you believe it, you can, it can lead you off to where you don't, you don't really want to be. It's awful quiet. I don't want to believe something if it does. the Bible doesn't say it. And so I like to research it. When I hear people preach, I don't just hear them and close my Bible and that's it. I'm going to go home and look up the words. I'm going to go search it out. I'm going to find out what is God saying to me about this situation. I don't want to listen to everybody. And after a while, when I hear people preach, within a few minutes, I can tell where they're headed. And if it's wrong, then I'm going to shut them off and watch something else. Watching Bozo the Clown would do you more good than to listen to some of those guys on television. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. In here, uh, Jesus, all of this written in red, is Jesus speaking to the people. And he's admonishing these lawyers for their behavior. And people have come to them. And they came to them sincerely for help. And what they did is they totally ruined their lives by telling them things that are not true. Uh, Pastor Dan was telling me of the schools that he went to. He, he went to other schools. He has two doctorate degrees. And there are people in the schools that absolutely do not believe in the virgin birth. 
in the second coming, in miracles, I'm preaching to me. They don't believe in anything. They don't believe in being born again. And they believe they're saved. And, you, and these are the professors. These are the people that run the school. And so they are living in a lost world, totally separated from God. And if you say anything to them, they read the riot act to you and run you out of their class because they're in charge. That make them right. When Jesus came, uh, they tried to attack him in his doctrine, and he always embarrassed them. I'm, I'm preaching to me, but he did. He just let them have it. Some days I like to do that. Some days I like to take my sword out and reduce somebody to nothing because of their ignorance and stupidity. I don't do it, thank the Lord. But that's what I want to do. It's not helping anybody. We often see people, and I know that people want to go uh, to a church where everybody's nice and good. They even design churches for, for that. They want to eliminate all the poor people. They want to eliminate all the people that don't fit into to what they want. And they have a, a, a design church for certain people. And they make fun of all the poor people. They drive them out of their building. And then they only have a certain group of people. And often they have teachings that only go to people that are 30 years old and under. And they create a congregation of young people. And everybody that's older gets the left foot of fellowship. Amen. If you read the book of James, you'll find that's absolutely a sin. And I'm not trying to design the church for anything. But other that the church should develop and become uh, uh, obedient in the sight of God and be ready to meet the Lord at the point of death. And for all of us, none of us know when that day is. So that means we should be ready all the time. We should pray every day. Can I get a witness? We should be ready to go if we if our day is today. When we go home, amen, we could be driving down the street and somebody run a red light and today would be our last day. We need to make sure our heart is right with God. And when we leave this earth, this make sure we wave goodbye, amen, because we're out of here. But you cannot tell me what day your day is. No one knows. But if today was the day and you're right with God, you get to go be with the Lord. But if you're not right with God, then you're going to be eternally separated from his presence. Amen. We see the issues both in Paris and Brussels and in the Boston Marathon and 911, how people died when they had no plans of dying on that particular day. We have people that were in schools. We have people that were in businesses. We have people that, that were in airplanes. That, that was the last day that they spent on the earth. And if their heart wasn't right with God, where, wherever, amen, their heart was, and they and the plane landed, that's where they're going to spend eternity in heaven. And so I want to encourage you because this week is so significant. This week is a special week. It's special days. And I, I like to put it that way because for now, most of us, Look at almost every day the same. Can I get a witness? Sunday, even though you go to church, isn't much different than Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And it should be special. Hello? And these days that I'm talking about, these were, were the only days. They, they were critical days for mankind's salvation. And if Jesus did not accomplish the work of the crucifixion and the resurrection, then everything that we do as a church would be in vain. We would be lost forever. You don't, are, are you comprehending that? Without Jesus doing what he did, we're lost forever. There's no way to get into heaven. Someone said, I'm a good person. I can make it. Not without the blood. 
not without the blood, not without the, the holiness of God in you. I'm amazed at the apostles after Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection that they all hid and, and they did not go out and, and start ministering. Uh, the fishermen went out, fit, started fishing again. Uh, guys that were, were tax collectors did their thing. They went out and all the things that Jesus said to them for three and a half years apparently went in one ear and out the other. Now, I, I, they, those guys ought to be glad that I'm not Jesus. If I'm Jesus, I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. Hello. I'm going to let them have it. I would. I would tell them, you know, I, after I suffered like I did, I died on the cross, go preach to the people that were in, in the, what they call Hades, amen. I, had to, I could go to a place called paradise, but all the trouble I've been through, I had to come back up, get raised from the dead, and, and then go ascend to the Father, sprinkle the blood on all the things in heaven, do all that, and then people ignored everything I did. It's so wonderful. It's so wonderful what Jesus did for, for mankind, and people need to appreciate it. And that blood will forgive you tonight. That blood will restore you tonight. That blood can heal you physically. That blood can chase every devil out of the place. That blood can bring restoration to the meanest, vilest person. But without a holy sacrifice that was given on those days through Jesus Christ, we would not have that great privilege of being delivered. I think of the things that the Lord delivered me from, I may not be the same things that you were delivered from, but I thank God that I got delivered when I got saved. The places I used to go, I don't go there anymore. Things I used to do, I don't do them anymore. Things I used to say, I don't say them anymore. The things that the devil used to get me trapped by, I don't go there anymore. I find myself, amen, if I do fall prey to sin, I immediately ask God to forgive me according to 1 John. What a wonderful covenant we have. I can get forgiven. But I don't live like I used to live. I don't. It used to be all day long in sin. Hello? It was all day long doing stuff that wasn't right. I don't do that anymore. I haven't. Amen. So we have this opportunity. Amen. And I don't want to take too much more time. But I, I wonder, I want you to just think about this. Do you ever have a day that you consider it's holy? Do you have a day that is special to you? Do you have a day, do you remember the day you got saved? I know some people wrote it down. I don't have the exact date but I could take you to the spot where I got saved. I could do that. Amen. I could take you to the church and the place. Amen. Where I got saved. I could take you to the place where I got filled with the Spirit. I could take you to the place where hands were laid upon me and gifts of the Spirit began to operate in my life. Take you right to the spot. I take you to places of special things happen. I can remember seeing a person get healed by hands laying upon them. I know the place that I got healed, amen, down in, amen, Brother Willoughby's in South Ontario. There's other things that I know. I was there when people got healed and delivered and set free. Free. I've been there when people were filled with the Spirit. I've seen people carried out of the church. They spoke in tongues for hours, and they had to pick them up and carry them and put them in the car, and somebody had to drive them home. Spoke in tongues for hours and hours. We need, we need the Holy Spirit. How many times has the Lord rescued you from, from dilemmas and, and dire circumstances and situations? Without those three days, those events would never take place. I remember I needed a job 
and I, I was going to go in to apply for a job, and the presence of God entered my car. And the only thing I could tell you, I knew I was going to get the job before I ever went in the building. And I applied for the job, and a couple of days later, they called me and got the job. I've been through a lot of issues and situations, and we live in the earth, and the Holy Spirit is real to me. The Holy Spirit that was sent down through the sacrifice of Christ is real, and he does the things that the Bible says he does. And we get to be partakers of his holiness. What a wonderful blessing. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. I'm amazed, and we'll close with this, and we're going to pray. I'm amazed that people, amen, do not listen to this, this important week. And they only come to church on Christmas and Easter. My son calls them CEOs. Christmas and Easter only. Hello. Let the whole rest of the year go by. Oh, but I'm there on Christmas and Easter. Haven't prayed a prayer. Haven't helped anybody do anything. But bless God, I'm there on Christmas and Easter. You know, I, I need more. I need to be obedient. We're going to take a minute and let's pray tonight. I hope I helped you tonight. And I want you to have a special day this Sunday. It should be a very special day for you. It should remind you of when you got saved. All these other wonderful events, because without that day, none of it would have taken place. Father, we thank you tonight in the mighty name of Jesus for this wonderful opportunity to be in your house. And we thank you for this week that's so special to us. We thank you that you walked the walk, talked the talk, and gave your life so that we could be delivered and set free. May you bless your people on tonight in a special way. And as we continue in this week to celebrate your death, burial, and resurrection, may you bless us in a very special way. And may Rock of Faith advance and, and, and be pleasing in your sight that we might appreciate these three days better than we ever have. And we give you the glory, the praise, and the honor. We ask it tonight in your name, the name of Jesus, and everyone said, Amen. Anyone at all tonight, you would like prayer? You need prayer if you'll come. I'll be glad to pray with you. Anyone at all? All right, will you stand with me, please? We're going to go ahead and dismiss the meeting. One more time, would you turn to your neighbor and smile out at them and tell them I love you and you can't do nothing about it. Tell them I love you and you can't do nothing about it. We're going to keep going.
praise the Lord. Amen. If it's all right, we're going to ask our uh, sister Mary Lee, would you dismiss us in a word of prayer, please? Lord, this is a most wonderful week. It's a sad week because of the suffering that you did for us. Yet it is a wonderful week, as our pastor has said. It's the one that gave us salvation, deliverance, anointing, miracles, and healing. All the benefits come from you. And we praise you, Lord, for this message tonight. And as we go through the week, help us to keep our mind upon you, Lord, and upon what you did for us, that we might be even more willing to do for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you tonight. Would you greet someone and tell them you're glad they came? God bless you really good. Amen. Thank you for watching Rock of Faith. If you liked our service, please like and subscribe to our channel. If you really like our service, share it with a friend or family member. For the latest news and announcements, please go to our website, roffont.com. Our Google Calendar is on the front page. You can find the link in our video description.